these fresh face IPOs flood the market, pays to be extra skeptical of newly minted stocks, even the ones that belong to good companies. They often tend to be overpriced. But every now and then, I see one that's too attractive to ignore. And that's why I recommended that Trade Web Markets the other day, an electronic trading platform that's trying to revolutionize all kinds of very old-fashioned financial instruments. And since then, the stock's given me a 10% gain. Three weeks. How did I know Trade Web would work? Well, because it's part of a broader secular theme exemplified by market access, MKTX. That's the major electronic trading platform for bonds, and market access had made you a fortune. This stock has rallied about 400% over the past five years, and it's up a quick 45% since we last spoke to the CEO, roughly just nine months ago. And the darn thing just keeps climbing. Market access reported a solid quarter on Wednesday, some impressive trading volume growth, especially from their new open trading platform, which is up 66%. Sure, TradeWeb has been a big winner, but you don't want to forget about the original standout in the space, at which, after trade Web's run, by the way, is actually represents a much bigger bargain. So let's check in with Rick McFay. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO of Market Access Holdings. Find out more about his company, what it's doing, where it's headed. Mr. McFay, welcome back to Man Money. Thank you, Jim. All right. First of all, congratulations on the Thank incredible you. returns. I want to talk about two concepts that I think never get, uh, get old and are in secular growth mode. I'll talk about transparency and democracy, because when I traded bonds, we had no transparency, yeah. no democracy. You've changed that. We sure have, and uh, trading automation and the growth of electronic trading is only helping with that. Uh, the data that we now have available to our clients is allowing us to predict the next trade on about 25,000 QCIPs, so we're really promoting right, We'll tell QCIP what people know, because that is a remarkable figure from someone who has traded bonds. Every individual bond has an identifier right. or a QCIP, so uh, we now can, uh, we have very credible means of predicting the next trade in those bonds. Uh, so through artificial intelligence. Through artificial intelligence and the data that we have uh, that allows us to create models to predict that next trade. Uh, so that's the one piece. And you talk about democratization of the, of the market. That's all about open trading. Right. Uh, we've moved from a world where it was all client to dealer trading to one in which anyone can trade with anyone else around the world. And that's creating new forms of liquidity and bringing new entrants into the credit markets, which reduces transaction costs. Okay, so uh, old world versus new world. Describe what used to be, I know, in my world versus the way it is now. Well, the old world, and we've talked about this before, yeah. trading bonds like high yield like you did was really hard. Yes. Uh, you had to be on the phone calling around to find a price, uh, difficult to trade, uh, no real electronic means of execution, right. no real central uh, uh, trade tape for data. The new world is uh, a tremendous amount of real-time data at the ready for pre-trade price discovery, a wide open global electronic market, and new entrants flocking in. And we're mixing in ETF share trading now as another way to transfer risk in the bond market. Now, when our viewers hear ETF, they get very interested because they want to be in bonds. They want to be in ETFs because they're a little scared. Yeah. I don't blame them. I shouldn't use the word scared. They're concerned. Uh, how does an individual investor uh, be a benefit from market access? Well, two things, right? Uh, and uh, ETFs are clearly a very efficient way for individual investors uh, to participate in the, in the global right. bond market. So a lot of growth in ETFs. I agree with you, a sensible way for the individual investor. The other way, uh, uh, most uh, uh, individual investors also uh, invest through mutual funds. And as we're reducing the friction costs or the costs of trading for those mutual funds, that contributes to their portfolio returns. So what we do to drive trading costs down ultimately does help the individual Okay, investor. good. I do want to emphasize people at home, that is the way you should invest in these fixed income instruments. I was worried about you. I was worried about you because we had S&P Global on, Doug Peterson, yeah. terrific guy, and the issuance in the fourth quarter was incredibly low because yeah. it was just such a terrible time. Yeah. And I said, well, this is going to be when we get the test yeah. for whether market access is in secular growth or it's more cyclical. You had a blowout quarter. Yeah, yeah, well... Uh, we're a little bit like mad money. We thrive on a bit of chaos. <laughs> okay, and, uh, thank you. In the fourth quarter, you're right, new issuance was way down, but right. there was much better volatility in the bond markets. Right. High yield spreads were blowing right. out. Uh, the uh, move into year end with limited balance sheet was making liquidity scarce, right. and clients flocked to market access to find the liquidity that they needed. Right. And we drove more transaction costs back out to our clients in that quarter than ever, be transaction cost savings back to our clients in that quarter than ever before. Well, that's incredible. You know, Rick, I used to trade international bonds. And you know why I traded them? Because there were so many anomalies, inaccuracies, craziness, that you could make a fortune just because it was blind man's bluff. <laughs> Internationally, you're fixing that. 
We are, and uh, we're really pleased about the trends we see in our business, in Europe in particular. <laughs> Uh, but if you look back five or six years ago, international client volume was only about 10% of our total volume. It's now almost 30%. And Europe has been a big part of that. And they've really discovered the benefits of this all-to-all -all right. marketplace driving transaction costs lower. So we're really pleased that this has moved from primarily a U.S. story to a global right. story. One last question. You know, I mentioned trade web. Uh, it is wrong to say that really you guys are head-to-head -head competitors. You're kind of both after the same kind of thing, right? We sure are. You know, they're both uh, very successful global electronic fixed income businesses. Uh, so we are not at all surprised that they had a successful IPO um, and uh, that they've traded very well since because there's a scarcity value in electronic trading venues. It takes a long time to build these networks and it costs a lot of money. So if you look at Big the ones that, are, that have been successful, they're, they're, they're people like TradeWeb and Market Access that have been in the market for 20 years. But they participate mostly in the liquid end right. of fixed income, the rates market, and our focus is almost entirely on the credit markets which is where it's historically been harder to trade bonds, and we're making that easier. Well, that's really important, because I know that we've recommended TradeWeb, but when I heard you were coming on, I have to admit, TradeWeb has gotten too expensive versus Market Access. That's Rick McVay, founder, chairman, CEO of Market Access. What a phenomenal story, and it's a good story for you as an investor. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.